In this video, I'm going to talk about wear and osteolysis. And this is something that you really need to know quite a lot about because it can crop up in any part of your uh, basic sciences viva. And certainly in my basic sciences viva, I had an image of a worn polyethylene cup. And the opening question was, what is this? And what do you think has happened? So this is where you take your opportunity to talk about wear. And um, as you know, wear is the uh, unwanted loss of material from uh, a bearing surface. And you can largely divide them up into uh, different uh, types. So you have your mechanisms of wear, your modes of wear, and your volumes of wear. And your mechanisms of wear can largely be divided up into chemical, which is your corros corrosive type, so your corrosion, or your mechanical mechanisms of wear. And in your mechanical, you can talk about abrasive, adhesive, and your subsurface delamination. Uh, which is your catastrophic wear, where you uh, mainly uh, get it in uh, tibial polyethylene. And then in your modes of wear, it's fairly simple. You've got four, so one, two, three, and four. And uh, I'm sure you're all aware uh, mode one is uh, between two uh, intended articulating surfaces. Uh, mode 2 is between one intended and a non-intended uh, articular surface, 3 is third body, and 4 is between two non-intended articulating surfaces, such as backside wear or even at the trunnion. Volumes of wear can largely be divided into linear and volumetric. And the important uh, difference here is that uh, linear is measured in uh, millimetres, uh, per year, and volumetric is measured in uh, millimetres cubed per year. So then it, this uh, nicely leads on to, well, they showed me this picture of a worn polyethylene cup. I've talked about wear, and uh, and, and, and then the, the kind of question goes on to, well, what happens? Uh, how, how does the, uh, the implant eventually fail, and how does osteolysis uh, occur? So this is where you start talking about the osteolysis cascade. Now, when you have uh, polyethylene particles, uh, this gets into your effective joint space. And these polyethylene particles are typically uh, 0.1 to 0.5 submicrons. And it, the, the important thing to mention is that this triggers uh, the osteolysis cascade, which is macrophage um, uh, initiated. So here you have your macrophage, okay? And your macrophage, first of all, in your five-step process, and I'll tell the examiner there are five steps to the osteolysis cascade. The first step is that the macrophage phagocytoses these polyethylene particles. And various things occur after that. So firstly, the macrophage um, expresses interleukin-1, uh, prostaglandin E2, and TNF-alpha. And these three um, uh, cytokines, if you like, they directly stimulate your osteoblasts. So these are your osteoblasts or your bone lining cells. And um, these directly stimulate your osteo, osteoblast stage two. And this has uh, uh, the, the, the various effect of then directly stimulating your osteoclast, which is your multinucleated giant cell, via the rank, rank ligand pathway and also through direct expression of IL-6. Now, as you know, this is your periosteal surface, for example. This is your osteoclast in your Hauship's lacunae with your integrins. And if you look at the osteoclast video, you'll, you'll see how this works in resorption. So this 
is your third step. Your fourth step is through direct expression from your macrophage of also IL-6. This also directly stimulates your osteoclast. And then finally, your macrophage can directly resorb the bone through matrix metalloproteinases, through MMPs. So you can see how um, this whole cascade works. It has the, the, the macrophage initiated resorption has a direct effect on resorbing bone through MMPs, but it also has an indirect effect through osteoblasts and osteoclasts.